Monthly budgeting does not have to be lame. That is why I want to show you today how you can create a very functional yet cute monthly expense spreadsheet. And then I'm also going to show you how to use it as well. And it's just another great way to have your life organized because this is what my channel is all about. Productivity and organization using digital tools. So let's just get right into it. So first of all, I'm just gonna write some text that I need to add. So the month and the year if you want to, but you don't have to add the year. And then I also want to add the amount of money that I'll have for the month. Then the expenses and the categories. Then the actual amount of money I spent on that month, what I planned to spend, and the difference. And I just copied the categories from my finished spreadsheet, but just any categories that you would need, like, and they can be worded whichever way you like and whatever makes sense to you. For example, if I have rent but you have a mortgage then you would obviously put mortgage then i'm going to add the total budget the total expenses and the total assets so the budget total and total expenses are different and i'll explain that in a second but then i'm also going to add the amount of money i'm going to have for the month so let's say for example 1300 it's a round number so it's easier to use that as an example now I'm just going to quickly add some borders because this just makes it easier for me to see how they're separated. Then I'm going to merge these cells for the expenses title and I'm just going to customize it a bit more to so put it in the middle and give that a border as well and then yeah just add more borders just so it looks less chaotic and more structured because it makes it easier to add data at least for me now the next thing we're going to add is the formula for the difference so how is the difference calculated i will have the formula on the screen but all you have to do is add that number and then just add it to the rest of the cells like this and just add and then put the format as whichever currency you're using now I'm just going to make this text bigger and then I'm going to and I'm just going to change up a few things. Now as you see, I have three categories here that you should pay attention to, which is savings, purchase, savings and investments. So when it comes to the savings and investments, I'm actually going to switch the cells because if I save more money than I plan to, then I want the difference to be in a plus instead of a minus. Now, once that is done, we're going to figure out the percentages. So the amount of money you budget for each category compared to the money you have for the month. So to figure that out, you can just go through online articles and see what are the appropriate percentages for what is the acceptable amount to pay for bills. But I have my own percentages already set up. So all you have to do is just copy and paste the categories on the, on the side there. Just so we can quickly figure out these numbers and then we'll delete them later. So just go through each category and just add the percentage to it. I'm also just quickly going to add the summary in the bottom because I want to make sure that all of these percentages at the end equal to 100. We don't want it to be more or less than that. It has to be 100. And then I'm going to format the numbers as percentages, but it's not necessary because this is a quick reference. So I'm just going to quickly add the percentages here, just making sure that everything adds up to 100 at the end. And I also want to mention that when it comes to a savings purchase, I do not add a percentage there because it's a savings purchase is a purchase I made with the money I specifically saved for it over the course of a few months. Personally, for me, this separate savings category of not counting the purchase I made with the money I saved for specifically has helped me get rid of a lot of the stress seeing a huge expense 
and messing up my budget. Now, if you think this video has been helpful so far, definitely give it a like and definitely subscribe because this channel is all about using digital tools to organize your life and become very productive so you can hit those big goals that you have set for yourself. Now, once the percentages are added, we're going to go to the plan section and we're going to add this formula. And you put the same formula in each cell, but you just change up the numbers. And now to calculate the budget total, we're gonna add a sum formula here, and that will add up all of the budgeting categories. So what's not included in this is the savings purchase, the savings, and the investments. Now when it comes to the total expenses, this is where you do include the savings purchase. And when it comes to total assets, you only include savings and investments. As in total assets for the month, not in general. And then we're just going to quickly delete this because we don't need it anymore. And we just need it for the quick brainstorming of the percentages. Now the exact same for the difference. Budget total will be all of the spending categories and then all that so you just copy and paste honestly then i'm gonna just mass select these and then make them a bit wider because then they stand out a bit more and of course the exact same formulas for the actual as well and as you can see it's in zero at the moment because i don't have any numbers added up and as you can see it's in zero at the moment because i don't have any actual expenses written down yet Now we're just gonna add all of the zeros here. Now once that is done, we're going to insert the chart. So this is how I do it. First things first, I'm going to differentiate the yellow and the blue. You can't see the blue at the moment because I don't have any expenses written down in the actual category, but I will add these in a second because then you can see the blue bars on the chart as well because I want you to see the difference, so it makes more sense. So I'm just gonna quickly add the meanings to the colors. But yeah, the red one is the planned, and then the blue one is the actual expenses. Or savings. Now, just gonna quickly add a few numbers here, and as you can see, the chart is changing. So you can actually see some blue in there. But we're gonna go back to the chart, and we're actually gonna change it a bit more. So first of all, I just wanna add a pink background to it because that's what I like but of course pick any colors that you want now when it comes to the setup I'm going to pick a another chart because I don't like this one this is the ideal one that I would choose because then you can see the difference between planned and actual expenses and savings side by side And of course the red and the blue do not look cute, so I'm going to add a different color. So the actual expenses will be kind of this purple, muted purplish color. And then the planned amounts will be this kind of muted blue color. And uh, yeah, I personally like this a lot more. It just matches the color scheme I'm going for. Because you know, you want to make your expenses sheet look good so it's nice to look at when you're doing your expenses regularly and once the chart is done we're gonna add some pop of color and customize it a bit more so i want the total amount to be highlighted and then i'm gonna change the expenses title make it a lot bigger so it's easier to see and make it bold change the color and do all of that I'm gonna make the categories bold so they're easier to see and the savings and investments color will be different and the expenses will be a different color then change this text here as well and put it in the middle and make it bold 
So yeah, just customize it any way you would like, anything that looks good in your opinion. I honestly love expenses trackers because they really help you keep yourself accountable as well, which is really nice. I'm also going to add just a random bar of flower emojis because that's just the mood I have right now, it's just to add a bunch of flowers to my expenses sheet. And I just merged all of those cells together so you can see the bar. I also want to put the month in the middle as well and merging those cells and adding a border all around here as well. Now once all of the customization is done, I'm going to add a section where it shows the total amount of assets that I have in very simple terms, just savings and investments. Nothing too crazy. I want this spreadsheet to be very simple. Now, since we're done actually creating the monthly expenses summary, I'm going to show you how I use the spreadsheet. So I'm going to create another sheet underneath, and this is just going to be a loose document. I don't care about making this organized and cute looking. This is just like a temporary notes section for me. So at the end of every week, I just have these four categories. So the date, the amount, the category, which is the categories we added in the spreadsheet, and then the notes. So like if anything specific, like, oh, this is from this store or uh, exactly what it is. And I just add those. And yeah, at the end of every week, I just look through my expenses and add them here. And then I'll just like create a quick example of kind of what it looks like. Obviously, it'll be different expenses, but yeah. And I'll just look at each expense, like, okay, what category is this in? And then just calculate them all together in that second sheet. Then once I have all of those numbers together, I just add them to the actual section of my monthly expenses spreadsheet. And then you can see the difference on the bars and everything. Yeah, and yeah, I do I do this every week and, and this simple sheet has honestly helped me so much. Now, if you want this spreadsheet for yourself, I have it linked down in the description box. And whether you use the template or you made yours completely from scratch, this is how to use the spreadsheet. Now, if you'd also like to create an organized meal planner for yourself using Google Sheets, I have a video on that. And this way of planning my meals has helped me so much when it comes to saving money, saving time, staying healthy, wasting less food, and also just having a seamless grocery shopping experience. And if those things are important to you, then definitely check that video out. It's just another great way to use Google Sheets to become more organized in your life. I hope you have a very productive week and I will see you next time. Ciao!